This video takes a look at two common process capability indexes, CPK and PPK. A supplier has just sent you your process capability study based on a product he supplies you. Your requirement is a CPK value of 1.33. He's provided you 1.4. So you're happy. Everything looks pretty good on this chart. Everything's within specifications, fairly well normally distributed. You note that your process capability based on PPK is only 1.07 but he provided you the CPK and you're happy. You just missed something very important about your supplier's process. Do you know what that is? Let's start with a brief review of the two indexes and how they're calculated. CPK is a process capability, the minimum, based on an upper spec and lower spec. With the upper spec, it's the upper spec minus the average, overall average, divided by three times sigma. Capability based on the lower spec is the average minus the lower spec divided by three times sigma. In this case, this little red sigma is calculated from the average range from a range control chart. That's in statistical control. It's given by the average range divided by D2, where D2 is a control chart constant that depends on subgroup size. CPK is sometimes called the short-term capability because it's based on the within variation within a subgroup. PPK, which is the uh, another process capability index, has essentially the same equations as CPK. The only difference is the Greek letter sigma is replaced by the letter S, okay? And S is simply the calculated standard deviation. It's taking all the data and calculating the standard deviation, just like you'd use in Excel if you use the function STDEV. PPK is sometimes called the long-term capability because it includes all the data in the calculation of S. So why do we have differences? The reason you have differences is simply statistical control. If CPK is approximately equal to PPK, then the process is in statistical control. And that means that calculated standard deviation S is about the same as the estimated standard deviation from a range control chart. If the CPK is significantly different than PPK, then your process is not in control, and your calculated standard deviation will be significantly different than your estimated standard deviation from a range chart. Let's take a look at how this happens. We're going to have two processes that we use the same data in, that use an X-bar and R chart to analyze the results. In process number one, here there's an X-bar chart on top, and you can see that all our points are within the control limits, and we don't have any patterns, so this process is in statistical control. We can predict what it's going to make into the future. The same is true with the subgroup range chart. Everything is within specifications, we don't have any pattern, and we know what we're going to make into the future. And this is the chart down here that we would use to calculate the estimated standard deviation to use in the CPK calculation. So if you look at a process capability chart based on process 1, you'll see that our CPK value is 1.19. Now you take a look at PPK, and it's 1.14. Very similar. Estimated standard deviation based on that range chart is 9.5 estimated, uh, excuse me, the calculated standard deviation is 9.9. .9. Again, very close. So if your process is in control, the results are going to be very similar. Now we reorganize the data for process 2. And now let's take a look at the X-bar chart. You can see that this process has points beyond the limits, both above the upper control limit and below the lower control limit. It's not in control. You don't know what it's going to make into the future. Our range chart is still in control, though. Everything's within the, specif uh, within the control limits, and there are no patterns. So we're in control on the range chart, but not on the X-bar chart. So now what's the process capability analysis going to look like? Well, you can see it here. And what you'll see now is that the PPK value is the same as before, 1.14. Standard deviation is the same, 9.9. .9. It's because we use the same data. It's just arranged differently but the average and calculated standard deviation are the same regardless of how the data is arranged. What really changes is when you look at CPK. It's 2.07, and our estimated standard deviation is 5.5, significantly different than these two, all because your process is out of control. So the values of CPU and CPL are significantly different for process 2, and it all boils down to that issue of statistical control. When there are significant differences in the Standard deviations for CPK or versus PPK, it's a very strong indication that your process is out of control. And this table shows us that for process 1 and 2, we had a standard deviation of 9.98.
When it's in control, 9.54, very similar. When it was out of control, 5.46, very different. So the reality is that CPK is a better estimate of the potential of your process. It represents the best your process can do in the short term. And if your process is in statistical control, CPK is essentially the same as PPK. So you really don't need PPK in that case. But if your process is not in control, you've got something to work on. And in reality, both CPK and PPK are pretty well meaningless, particularly PPK. But if your range chart is in control, CPK can give you a measure of what your process could do if you brought it into statistical control. So that's a look at CPK or PPK and who wins. Thank you.